Welcome everyone. My name is Jesse, and I work in customer success here at Crowdmark. Thank you so much for joining us for today's tooltip session. Today we will be focusing in on grading tools. So I will be providing you with a short little 15 to 20 minute presentation on all of the unique grading tools available to you within Crowdmark and all of their different functions. So I am actually just starting off here today in Crowdmark's uh, main homepage, our website. And I am actually just going to go ahead and sign into my Crowdmark account. I am just going to choose a course here that I have set up for my grading tools. And I'm going to click into an assessment that has already been completed and already has some student work uploaded. So we can go ahead and take a closer look. So please note, as an instructor, you will only be able to grade after a due date for an assessment has already passed. And so once you do click on grade in your assessment interface, you will be presented with this little dashboard here, and this will outline all of the different questions that are part of an assessment, as well as the progress that has already been made by the grading team and the different versions of questions that exist within that assessment. You'll also be able to see here who from your grading team has already started to grade the questions so far by hovering over this little graders icon. And you'll also be able to see how quickly uh, that grader has actually went through each question and the speed of grading that has already happened. So the reason students work is divided by questions is because we have found it to be much faster to grade this way. So to begin grading, you simply want to just go ahead and click into a question. And you'll notice as soon as you've landed on a student's assessment or work, there are a number of tools that you can use to leave feedback, which differ based on the different question types or responses that you are working with. So as you can see here, we are dealing with an administered in-person paper-based assessment. We do have our QR code here and we have uh, our template for the assessment and the student's answers already uploaded. So let's just go ahead and start at the top here for our little grading tools that are located on the left-hand sidebar. So if we click into this little speech bubble and click anywhere on the assessment page, we will go ahead and open up a comment field. A comment can be dragged and dropped to any location on the page and comments do support markdown for formatting and LaTeX for math and chemical equations. And comments can also include GIFs, graphs, links, or images. And you can also assign a positive or negative point value that will begin to calculate on the right-hand side for that particular question.
So adding a comment with a positive point value will add that number from a starting score of zero. And adding a comment with a negative point value will subtract that number from the maximum points set on that question. Keep in mind here that if you'd use comments with both positive and negative scoring in the same evaluation, the order in which you place the comments matters. So for example, if you use a comment with a positive point value first, and then you use a comment with a negative point value, the negative points will be subtracted from the positive or current point value. So as you can see here, I've added a comment with a uh, negative point value of minus one. And so our score here was seven and now it has changed to six out of 10. So you can use the grading keypad or your keyboard on the right hand side here to manually add in a score to the question. And this will override all comment points in the question score. If you remove your manual score by clicking the X, the question score will revert back to the automatic score set by the comment points. So next we have our freeform annotation or drawing tool. So this allows you to click and drag anywhere on a page to write or draw on top of student work. You can also go ahead and change the color of your tool. And I should also note that this drawing tool is compatible with a stylus pen in the case that you are marking or grading on a tablet or iPad. Next, we have our stamps. So we have checks, X's, and question marks. And you can go ahead and click anywhere on a page in order to add a stamp. So this just really helps you quicken the speed of grading. Next, we have our highlighting tool. So this allows you to quickly draw attention to student work by highlighting something you'd like to draw attention to on the page. We have our little garbage can feature here, which allows you to hover over anything and quickly delete or remove it in the case that a mistake was made or if you would like to correct your work. We also have our little color palette here to change the color of any of your grading tools. And lastly, we have our comment library. So with any comment that you make on a student's work, your comment is auto-saved to your comment library. And if you click onto this little book icon, you can go ahead and open up the comment library. And so the comment library shows all comments you have left on a question and graders can see their own comments and shared comments and instructors and facilitators can see every single person's comments. Using the comment library, you can view comments filtered by version, as well as view all shared comments left on a question. Some of the benefits of using the comment library include, once a comment is in the library, it can be used to grade that question throughout the entire assessment, ultimately saving you tons of time. If you select a comment and then edit the content, it will go ahead and save as a new comment. Comments from randomized questions are labeled by version and they are available to be used across any version of that same question. 
And comments can also be edited once to change every instance used across the entire assessment. Instructors and facilitators can also set up comments in the comment library using a rubric. And a comment can be shared with the grading team by turning on the share with team toggle function here. And this will allow comments to appear in every grader's comment suggestions. So that grading can ultimately be consistent throughout the entire assessment. You also have the ability to search for a comment here. And by accessing the comment library, you'll ultimately be able to see all the comments that have been shared with you or that you yourself have imported. So from here, we can edit comments, we can see usage, we can share comments with our team. And you can also go ahead and edit or delete here. You can also see here that you can include images and links to other resources as well in your comments. And they do also support emojis. So if you are using a Mac, you can activate the emoji menu by using command control space. And that will allow you to add fun little emojis in your grading as well if you choose to. So once we are finished grading our assessment question, we can go ahead and click into the next uh, question in the bottom right here. And Crowdmark actually ensures that markers do not double up on grading by placing you on a different page or booklet than your team members in the case that multiple people are grading at the exact same time. So you can ultimately move through questions, booklets, or search for a particular student or booklet. To do that, you can use these arrows in the top right here. If you click into booklet three, you can search for a booklet by the booklet number or by the student. You also have the option here to tag a booklet. So this is something that is not visible to students, just the grading team. So if there is an example answer, or if, uh, for example, a TA has a question about an assessment, they can go ahead and tag it for other team members. And that allows you to easily locate the uh, question or the booklet. You can also go ahead and filter evaluations by questions, team members, tags, and scores. And you also have some keyboard shortcuts that are available for you as well to quicken the speed of grading. We also have an overview grid here as well. So this allows you to quickly jump to different booklets or questions. And so you simply just go ahead and select the box. So if I want to move to Marie's question number two, I can select this empty box here, and then I'll be quickly brought to that specific page. So that ultimately concludes uh, Crowdmark's different grading tools. I really hope that everyone learned something new in today's session. Before I go ahead and conclude here, does anyone have any questions about anything that I showed today? If you do have a question, you can go ahead and post it in the chat or the Q&A Q &A rather in Zoom.
and we can go ahead and discuss anything that may have come up. All right, it doesn't look like there are any questions coming in. Uh, so I will go ahead and conclude here. I will send everyone a recording of today's session as well as a few helpful resources on the different grading tools that CrowdMark offers. So please stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for joining us. And I hope to see you at next week's tooltip session. Thank you so much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your week and happy Canada Day.